everyone, uh, my name is Andrew, and today we're going to be talking about biofuels from microalgae. So biofuels have been a point of interest for a couple of years now. However, as some of you guys may have noticed, the topic has become a little bit stagnant for the last couple of years. We haven't been really hearing a lot of new developments, and that kind of sparked my interest into kind of diving in a little bit deeper and seeing what's kind of taking so long. So some of the key developments of biofuels so far is the use of ethanol derived from grapeseed oil, sugarcane, or corn. Um, and while this does work, there are a few cons, a couple of cons to this technology, but the number one would be the huge water and land commitment to grow the crops. It's very inefficient to just petroleum usage and fossil fuels. And then there's also the added component of pesticides that are used to efficiently grow the crops, and that kind of slows it down overall. However, when we use microalgae as biofuels, it kind of subsides, uh, goes around a lot of those problems. So uh, when we're dealing with microalgae, we don't have to worry about the seasons. It's a year-round process, and it doesn't compromise on the production of other things, meaning it doesn't use up any land like growing corn would. Um, it also gets rid of CO2 that's locked into the air, which is a big pro in our fight against global greenhouse gases. And then it doesn't need pesticides the same way crops do. Um, there are some cons, though, mostly being the lack of large-scale data and a lack of development and interest, which is kind of what's slowing down the microalgae side of things. So the biofuel process has a couple of uh, different steps. First one would be algae and site selection, which is basically selecting the proper uh, mechanisms for best growth. Then there's algae cultivation, which includes optimizing light, water, carbon dioxide to optimize growth. Um, we go over to harvesting and then biofuel processing, which includes dehydrating and drying out the cells in order for the cells to be disrupted and then the oil be extracted. That oil contains a lot of lipids and fatty, um, free fatty acids, which are going to be key in making the biofuel uh, usable. When we're talking about uh, achieving optimal growth for the microalgae, you have to keep in mind the structures and the apparatuses in which they're being cultivated in. Um, there's the open pond versus photobioreactors. The photobioreactors are these columns on the top. Um, they basically uh, use up a lot less land by ver going up vertically rather than horizontally. And then the open ponds are what we see at the bottom where we see just taking up a lot of space and having agitators that are gonna help knock up the algae and create optimal surface area and growth. Another thing we need to keep in mind is selecting the best algae strain. We need to know whether or not it's mixotrophic or heterotrophic. Uh, we can do a couple experiments to find lipid productivity as well as its photosynthetic efficiency. Um, there are some other pros to microalgae production as we've talked about before. Um, in my opinion, the number one would be carbon fixation. Again, going through photosynthesis, it's gonna take out a lot of carbon dioxide from the air. It's also efficient in wastewater treatment, which is cleaning out organic matter out of, um, sorry, cleaning organic matter out of the water and converting it to more useful substances. And then finally, the used up algae can also be used as fertilizer. Um, after the ex oil extraction phase, there's still a lot of biomass in the cell walls and everything. And those are definitely usable by other organisms. And then it doesn't compete with agriculture. My proposed report would be the gradual development towards the adoption of biofuels. This can be achieved by allocating more researches towards biofuel production and making sure it's as optimal as possible before rolling it out. There's also the development of vehicles and machinery that would be more efficient in biofuel usage. And then the most difficult of all would be government regulations to enforce and encourage the adoption nationwide. There are a lot of different things when we talk about the future impacts. But basically, the use of biofuel production has the potential to change the world with energy production and consumption. Um, as humans, we have a really big impact on Earth through our years of fossil fuels and greenhouse gas emissions. So by embracing biofuels, we can take a cleaner, more efficient form of energy that would impact our um, toll on the Earth. There are a lot of issues such as corporate interests, political gridlock, and public skepticism. However, a generation of people passionate about the planet will be able to make the Earth a healthier home. Thank you. Bye.